Welcome one and all to my latest Skyrim challenge build, the Warrior. This powerful orc will use his combat prowess to take down his opponents with ease, even on the legendary difficulty setting. As with my other challenge builds, this character is only allowed to use the skills it has naturally raised at the start of the game, and none of the skills that start at 15 are allowed to go any higher. Before I get into the backstory, make sure you subscribe to the channel and give the video a like, to let me know you want more of these builds. We're getting close to the end of these challenge builds, but I have some great ideas after this to show you, so you'll want to stick around on the channel. As always, if you want to skip ahead to any part of the video, there are timestamps in the description, along with detailed stats on the character you are watching. The warrior was raised in a stronghold, but after a couple of decades spent mining and smithing, he wanted to see more of the world outside, so joined the Imperial Legion. There he met a young Imperial who joined up at the same time as him. The pair bonded whilst going through training together, and ended up as part of the same unit. Their first proper mission was to quell a village that had taken up arms and was threatening soldiers in an act of defiance to the White Gold Concordant and Thalmor rule. After a brief fight, the Orc and Imperial were left with the Kaistar to watch over the remaining citizens, while the others headed back to base with the prisoners. The Orc was sent out to do a quick sweep of the perimeter and check that all of the villagers were accounted for. Upon his return, he was greeted with the sight of his friend fighting off a pair of villagers who were desperately trying to take him down despite not having any weapons of their own. The Orc charged forward and knocked down one of the villagers with his shield, and the Imperial used the opportunity to stab his sword into the other. This caused the young Orc to pause for a moment. He had no qualms with killing an armed opponent, but this felt wrong. When the Imperial then put a foot on the chest of the other unarmed man and pushed his sword through the man's neck, something was clearly very wrong. He demanded an explanation as to what had taken place, and the Imperial explained that a couple of the villagers had daggers hidden on them. The elements of surprise had been enough for them to take down the Kaister, and the soldier had barely been able to take them down before the other villagers attacked him. The Orc decided to believe his friend, but he still felt that something was missing from the story. Although he wanted to wait for the rest of their unit to return, the Imperial convinced him that things would only end badly if two recruits were seen amidst a pile of corpses. Instead, he told the Orc to check the maps and look for a safe area for them to travel to, whilst he gathered supplies. As ordered, the warrior began poring over the maps they had been given, and working out where the best place for them to journey to was. Apparently, they couldn't head back to their own base, and the next closest one was over the border in Skyrim, but it would take them about a week to get there at best. By the time a route was plotted out, the Imperial had returned with a couple of large sacks slung over his shoulders. The pair had already been travelling for a few days by the time they reached the camp. Along the journey, the Orc had been asking questions about what happened at the village, and this had done little but caused the other soldiers to become less talkative and more reclusive. When they sit down by the fire, the Imperial decides to help the Elf with preparing food for the group, leaving the Orc to listen to the stories the others are telling. Not wishing to draw attention to himself, he remains silent, but notices the eyes of a well-dressed Breton on him. Although he chooses not to comment on this, it does cause him a great deal of worry, and is glad when the Red Guard takes a seat between them. He briefly speaks to this individual as they drink, and finds the man to be quite engaging. After days of being brushed off by his friend, it is nice to hold a conversation with someone once more, even if they are a complete stranger. Once morning has broken, the pair ready themselves to head into Skyrim itself, and end up being joined by the others of the group. Along the path, they end up temporarily separated though, and seemingly as soon as the others are out of sight, the Orc feels a hand on his shoulder. He turns around to see the helmeted face of a Tribune, who tells him that he will be taken to Helgen for questioning, in regards to the events that took place at the village. He goes with the officer, and sees that his brother-in-arms is also encountered the same situation. As they are being taken in, an attack takes place between Legion and Stormcloak forces, which leads to the Orc ending up shipped with the Stormcloaks and sent to Helgen. The skills available to this build are Heavy Armor, Two-Handed, One-Handed, Block, Smithing, and Enchanting. Heavy Armor dictates what apparel we have available to us, and helps us get a high armor rating. We're going to be getting stuck into every fight, and we will want to be able to take a good number of hits, so a high armor rating is critical to this build. Two-Handed is one of two damage dealing skills we have, and I found it most useful for when we go all out on the offensive. Through using a greatsword, I was able to get a strong DPS whilst also having a long reach, 
meaning I could keep enough distance from most enemies that I could land far more hits on them than they could on me. One-handed is the other damage dealing skill of this build, but we will be combining it with block as the character uses a shield and mace combo. This is what we will be using when we're on the defensive, be it to help us in drawn out fights or when we are holding off an enemy until a good opportunity presents itself to attack. Keep your shield held up until you're ready to strike out with your mace, in order to ensure you're preventing as much damage as possible. This build has two crafting skills, smithing and enchanting, which is the reason it's one of the most powerful of these challenge builds. With these two skills we can create ourselves improved and enchanted weapons and armour, which will provide a vast array of bonuses. Smithing obviously lets us create and improve our orcish weapons and armour, but also does the same with equipment we give to our follower. Enchanting then lets us enchant this gear to give us more health, deal more damage or improve our relevant skills. A key part of this is to create a fortify smithing suit, so we can get the most out of improving our equipment. The biggest problem we encounter from these skills is the fact we don't have speech, which means we can't buy any supplies, so we have to gather them ourselves. To this extent, make sure you're mining every ore vein you come across, and keeping your eyes peeled for soul gems. A good way to fill empty soul gems is to equip your follower with a soul trap weapon, and give them all of your empty soul gems. This way you can focus on adding a damage based enchantment to your own weapons, without having to worry so much about running low on soul gems for future enchanting or recharging. When levelling with this build you will want to put the overwhelming majority of points into health, so that you can tank plenty of damage. I did sink a couple of levels into stamina, but this isn't really necessary. The most helpful standing stone for this build will be the Warrior Stone. This will level us up 20% faster whenever we fight or visit a forge. If we're enchanting though, then make sure to switch over to the mage stone instead. In addition, I would recommend possibly switching to the steed stone late game in order to remove the weight of your heavy armour and give you some additional carry capacity for all your crafting supplies. The best power for this build is the racial ability of the orc, Berserker Rage. When we activate this power, we deal double damage and take half damage for a full minute. This can completely change the tide of battle, and should be used in any tricky fight in order to decimate your foes. The weapons for this build are an orcish mace and greatsword. The mace will be used in combination with a shield in order to deal a strong attack whenever our opponent is vulnerable. I chose the mace as we won't be focusing on DPS with this, instead only going for the occasional attack and prioritising defending ourselves over anything else. Conversely, I went for the Greatsword, as we want to be able to be dealing a ton of damage with this quickly, so we want a weapon we can swing like crazy and land a ton of hits with. This works great against weak enemies who we want out of the way quickly, or against anyone with a short reach. We wear a full set of improved Orcish armour, complete with the shield. As a matching set of mid-tier heavy armour, we can potentially reach the armour cap with this, and I was only a couple of hundred points off of it, despite being a fairly low level. We will be enchanting this set, and I used a mix of Fortify Heavy Armour, Health, One-Handed and Two-Handed to make the build even stronger overall. Don't forget too that you will want a ring and necklace that you can enchant with these bonuses, in order to get the maximum number of slots. The helmet likely will stay unenchanted, as the only enchantment that can be put onto this that would be of any help to us at all is Water Breathing as all the others are more suited to mages or thieves. When playing as the warrior, the most important faction to help out would in fact be the various orc strongholds dotted around Skyrim. You've been away from your people for too long, and spending time with Bloodkin will help reassure you of your place in the world. In addition, I would recommend rejoining the Imperial Legion. Although this may seem strange at first, I feel that the warrior would want a fresh start within the Legion, the chance to actually feel proud of his time spent serving. He has a chance in Skyrim to redeem himself, and be a noble warrior within the ranks this time around. As a follower for this build, I used Gorbash the Iron Hand. He is an orc who can be recruited at Dushnik Yal by beating him in a brawl, and I felt he fit in with his character better than any other followers would. I made sure to equip him with a full suit of orcish armour, minus for helm, and also an improved orcish warhammer. 
Followers can sometimes be a little reluctant to actually swing their weapons, so I find the higher damage archetypes are better for them to wield, so that they actually do some significant damage when they do attack. The Warrior is a tank build, and excels at keeping multiple enemies occupied. Through a combination of vegetable soup and bashing with your shield, you can effectively hold off a few different enemies whilst your follower picks off any stragglers and thins the herd. If you get the opportunity, you of course can dish out some damage yourself, but often it works out best to wait until enemies are isolated, before pulling out your greatsword and quickly finishing them off. The biggest drawback to this build in comparison to other tank builds is that you don't have a reliable healing skill, not being able to use alchemy or restoration at all. Instead, you will have to rely on potions you find and on cooked food to heal yourself in the middle of combat. I personally found that potato soup was one of the easiest things to produce en masse, only requiring salt pile and potatoes to make. If you hotkey your healing items, then you can use them on the fly, letting you stay focused on enemy movements. I hope that all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, then give it a like so that I know, and if you aren't already, then subscribe, so you can see more great builds like this one. If you are new around here, then check out some of my other videos. I have a ton of other great builds, as well as several challenge runs currently in progress, so there's plenty of content to occupy your time with.